Hi, I'm Casey Tree. 35 years ago, I was an addict with no hope and no future. It was then that I realized a simple truth that changed my life forever. The truth is, you can change. Whatever the circumstance, you can make choices that change your life forever. Join me on this journey of change as we examine living in our world and finding out what it means to truly be successful. Hey friends, great to have you with us on the program today. Very special message for you. I think you're gonna love it. We call it Closer Than You Know. And we're talking about your relationship with Jesus, your prayer life, your walk with Him. Oftentimes, we're trying to get the Lord to do things that He's already doing, right? We're praying for Him to come, but He's here. We're praying for healing, but He has healed us. And so let's learn how to believe and receive what the Lord has done. I think you're gonna be encouraged, you're gonna be empowered in your walk with God during today's program. Remember, you can always go to caseytreat.com. You can see other messages. You can see the full series that we have produced entitled Closer Than You Know, and many other things. Wendy's teaching, lots of fun stuff at caseytreat.com. So love to have you connected with us on a regular basis through the website. Of course, our Christian Faith Church app is a lot of fun. And there you can see all of our live services at Christian Faith Church app. So I hope you'll connect with us there too. I'm praying today that the word is working mightily in you, that you hear something that will bring change and renewal into your life, and you're gonna enter into a greater relationship with the Lord. We don't always realize how close God is to us, and because of that, we don't always take the opportunity to speak with God. In this series, you will learn about the power of prayer and how even the simplest of prayers can change your life around. Also, get God's Word for Every Circumstance by Pastor Casey Tree. This book will give you practical, daily steps to walk through life in. Are you looking for scriptures to face down fear or uplift you in moments of trial? This book will make it easy to overcome the world with scriptures from the Bible, just for your situation in an easy and practical way. For a limited time, receive a gift DVD pack of Closer Than You Know, a simple prayer along with God's Word for Every Circumstance, written by Pastor Casey Treat with your donation of $28. Call 800-294-0393 to get this limited time offer today. Also, don't forget to visit www.kctreat.com for more amazing resources. Forgiveness makes you free. Now, let's go to the next one. Point number five. Do not lead us into temptation. Deliver us from evil. And the New King James says, from the evil one. Do you know the Bible reminds you and actually instructs you to realize you have an enemy? Peter said, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He can't devour everybody, but he's seeking whom he can devour. Well, who can he devour? Folks that leave the door open. Folks that stay bitter and angry, folks that are prayerless, folks that don't know. The Bible said many of God's people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. So we're going to be sober. We're going to be vigilant. We're going to realize we got an enemy. The devil is looking for a way in to destroy our lives. Jesus said the thief comes to kill and steal and destroy John chapter 10. Now, we, we realize our enemy is not people. We love people. We pray for people. We want people to get saved. There's not any one person. We don't want to be saved. We, we want them to be healed. We want them to be blessed. If their marriage is struggling, we want their marriage restored. You say, well, I got a few. I'm not going to really go that far. No, every person. I don't know of anybody on the earth that I don't want God blessing, helping, healing, prospering their life. They're not our problem. People aren't our problem. You say, oh yeah, I got a few of them on the freeway. They're my problem, all right. I'm sitting next to one in my office. That's my problem right over there. I'm happy when they don't show up for work. 
Oh, you got your eyes on the wrong thing. Because there's always going to be people that the enemy could use. There's always going to be people that might have a bad spirit or might be involved with bad things. And yet, if you get your eyes on people, you miss what the Lord might be trying to do in your life. So he said, deliver us from evil, from the evil one, not from people. I remember one guy was so upset. He was angry at everybody. I hate people. People driving me crazy. He was just going on and on about how bad people were. And I said, bro, have you ever stopped to think you're a people? <laughs> right? You start hating all people, you're going to hate yourself. Right? So remember who your enemy is. Remember who the real problem is here. Satan comes to kill and steal and destroy. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible said we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Don't wrestle with people. Well, I'll tell you, my problem is my mother-in-law. Come on, man. You got to get smarter than that. Every time my father-in-law comes over, the whole house goes dark. It's not the father-in-law, right? We get our eyes on the wrong thing. Well, I was happy until that person cut me off on the freeway. They ruined my day. Yeah, and then you flipped them off, and then they pulled in front of you, and then they hit the brakes, and then you hit the brakes, then all the drama and the trauma because you thought they were the problem. You didn't realize it's simply the enemy trying to get you off track. The enemy trying to get you filled with bitterness. It's the enemy trying to get you into a bad spirit. You need to keep your eyes on the Lord and say, thank you, Lord. You deliver me from the evil one. Don't wrestle. Don't wrestle against flesh and blood. There will always be people that the enemy uses, but we know who our real enemy is. Let me give you a couple other scriptures so you can pray this prayer like the Lord did. Deliver us from evil. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You've had one of those days, right? The enemy comes in like a flood. Boy, somebody didn't show up for work. You're having to cover their responsibility. And someone else is sick and feeling bad and complaining about their problem. And, and then the boss walks in and he's got his normal demon-possessed attitude. And, you know, you got the, seems like the flood is coming against you. Yeah, but this is what the Bible says. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard. He strengthens you. He empowers you. He gives you opportunity. You're going to use this day to go higher, to go farther, to do more. This might be the very thing you've been waiting for, to break through to that new position, to get that raise, to get that new opportunity. Hey, when the enemy comes against you, the Spirit of the Lord rises up, and it might be your breakthrough moment. Keep your attitude, keep your faith, keep your perspective, because God may be doing some amazing things. I said to you not long ago, when our church was brand new, there was a book that came out about Robert Schuller, and it was about Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland, all these old time preachers back in the day, and they were big. They were on TV, Oral Roberts and all these guys. They were big ministries on TV. And this guy, he was saying everything that was wrong with them. And he put me in the conversation. He put Wendy and I in there, and he said, and these, these uh, kids up in Washington, they're part of the same cult. Well, nobody knew us until that book came out. And at first, I was hurt. I was like, oh, Lord, they're going to think we're bad. They're going to hate. They're going to believe everything this guy said. Oh, man, what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden, I realized he just made me famous. He, he, Robert Schuler called me and said, hey, I've never met you, but I see you're in the book with me. Would you come and speak for my church? I'm in the Crystal Cathedral. I mean, wow. 
Oh, Roberts asked me to be on his board. He'd never met me before, but here I am in the book with him. He thinks I must be cool. Next thing I know, I'm invited to be on the board. And somebody else brought me to a conference. And all of a sudden, our church multiplied. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts us up and helps us through. Now, if you get hurt, you get mad, you get down, stop praying, why God, why is this happening to me? You're going to miss your chance. But you keep your prayer life strong. Jesus is going to walk with you. He'll deliver you from the evil one. Isaiah 54 Verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, the Lord will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. You don't got to clap back. You don't got to tweet back. You don't got to come back. Let the Lord do it. He'll do it better than you ever could do it. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against you, the Lord will condemn. So, talk to God, pray to God, trust the Lord. Thank you, Father. You deliver me from the evil one. Now, you get in, you start wrestling with them. You play on their turf, you play in their spirit, you become part of that world, well, win a few, lose a few, but you stay connected with God, you win every time. You overcome, you rise above, he'll take you on. Okay, so number one, our Father, you're in heaven, I worship you. Number two, your will be done. Your kingdom come. Number three, you meet our needs, our daily bread. Number four, forgive us, Lord, while we forgive others. Number five, deliver us from the evil one. And number six, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We started with praise and worship. We end with praise and worship. Thank you, Father. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. I'll worship you forever. I'll sing of your praises forever. Did you ever hear the Lord's Prayer sung? It used to be a popular song in Christian world, uh, singing the Lord's Prayer. I'll never forget the ending. For thine is the kingdom. You ever heard that song? And the power. You don't, don't like my singing? <laughs> and the glory forever. Okay, I will let Tasha do the singing. But leaving your prayer time with praise, right? Leaving your prayer time thanking God. You hear and you answer my prayer. It's your power, Lord. It's your glory, Lord. Thank you. You hear and you answer my prayer. That's how we finish. And if you'll just follow these six prayer steps that Jesus gave us, right? He knows how to pray. He's our Lord and Savior. He's telling you this will work. Do it. And if we'll follow it, it could take you two minutes, or it could take you 20 minutes, or it could take you an hour, right? You can pray through those six things in just a moment, or you could pray on each point for a few moments, or you could pray everything you know in scriptures and spend time at each point and take an hour in prayer. Whatever you do, God hears. God answers your prayer. However you pray it, in your language, with your accent, and, and your perspectives, God hears and God answers your prayer. And why does he tell us this? Because he wants to answer your prayer. He wants to be at work in your life. Don't let anything stop your prayer life. Don't let anxiety stop your prayer life. 
Don't let fear stop your prayer life. Worry, no, not going to stop my prayer life. Unforgiveness, no, not going to stop my prayer life. The other day I was on my phone walking downtown Seattle because I would never be on my phone while I was driving. <laughs> Unless you're with an Uber. Amen? So I'm walking downtown on the sidewalk on my phone. An important conversation, but I'm on my way to a meeting. I got to get to my meeting. And I could tell I was losing the signal. Have you ever been in that situation? You could tell you're losing your signal. And I started, every other word started dropping out. And I had to get to my meeting. I had to keep going. But then, I, then I'd, been, can you hear me? Are you there? Are you still there? You ever been in that conversation? And I'm, I'm hearing a little bit. He's still, um, but I'm losing signal. That's what happens when you stop praying. That's what happens when you stop forgiving. That's what happens when you're wrestling in the things of this world. You're talking to God, but your signal is going bad. You think you're still walking with the Lord, but you're losing your connection. And pretty soon, it completely drops out. Let's keep our heart right. Let's keep our prayer life strong. Let's go on and win and walk with God in every situation. Now, I want to show you one more prayer from the life of David. Go to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I showed you the prayer of Jabez, the prayer of Jesus outline. Now, here's a prayer from the life of David. You know David. He's one of the greatest men in the Bible. God liked David. He, he built the temple. He led worship. He prophesied the largest book of the Bible, the book of Psalms, came from David, mostly from David. He was a king that God blessed and brought more land and more victory to Israel than any other king. David, an amazing man, and yet still a man. Therefore, we know men have problems. Men make mistakes. Men do dumb things. And David was a man. David had an affair. This thing just kept going. It snowballed into more and more troubles. And David found himself in a tragedy. And here's his prayer. He went back to God. He started in pain. And then he prayed. And he ended in praise. I want you to see it. David's life wasn't perfect. But he always went back to God, even when he was in pain. And then he would pray, and he would end up in praise. Look at it. Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is always before me. So you can tell he's in a bad place. When he started writing this prayer, he was struggling. He was condemning himself. He was miserable. He knew he'd messed up, and he was just kind of living in that pain. You know, along with forgiveness, we forgive others. We also have to forgive ourselves. The Bible doesn't teach you to live in condemnation. Conviction, sure, but not condemnation. What's the difference? Conviction says, I want to get better. I want to be stronger. I never want to go there again. I want to rise up. Condemnation says, I'm so stupid. I always do the wrong thing. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never get out of these terrible relationships. What's wrong with me? No, the Bible said there is no condemnation in Christ. Yeah, conviction to help motivate us, to help us rise up and be better, but not condemnation. And sometimes we think to feel guilty and to be condemned is spiritual. 
Yeah, I just feel so bad. I, I just feel the weight, the burden. I know I've been. And you think that's a spiritual place. No, that's the enemy trying to push you down. The Bible is trying to lift you up. The Holy Spirit is trying to lift you up. So David starts in his pain. And he says, forgive me, God. Wash me. Cleanse me. Get me out of this problem. Get me out of this sin. Get me out of this guilt. Get me out of this condemnation. And then look at verse 10. Psalm 51, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Now, you see, David is beginning to pray. He went from pain to prayer. Create in me a new heart, God. Lord, thank you for a new spirit. Thank you for healing in my life. Thank you for renewal in my life. Recreation. Lord, recreate the joy in my marriage. Recreate the love in my marriage. Recreate the happiness in my home. Get me past this problem. You've been struggling with financial trouble. You've been struggling with job problems. You've been struggling fighting in your home. Get me past this, Lord. Create in me a new heart. And God begins to work. Don't take the Holy Spirit. We know from the New Testament, the Holy Spirit will never leave you nor forsake you. Work in our home, Holy Spirit. Bring healing in the home. Bring, bring renewal in our relationships, Holy Spirit. Lift us above these problems. Lift us above our anxieties. Lift us above our negativity. Help us, Holy Spirit. So David's gone from pain to prayer. Now he sees what God can do. Now he's believing God's at work. God's going to get me through. God's going to lift me up. God's going to create in me a new circumstance. Church, never doubt, never forget, God can create a new circumstance. He can rewrite your story. He can rewrite the narrative. He can bring a new perspective. There was sorrow in the midst of labor, but now there's joy when the child is born. There is pain in the developmental process, but there is joy in the victory and the win. And never forget, God can get you to the win. Oh, you say, my wife left, my husband left, I got let go from the job, I'm way behind financially. I know, it looks bad, it feels bad, it is bad, but that's why we're praying. We're connecting with God. We're saying, all right, God, create in me a new story. Create in me a new heart. Create in me a new narrative. Create in me a new vision. And the Holy Spirit starts working. And David, out of his worst, rose back up to be a great king in Israel. And you and I, out of our worst circumstances, will rise back up to serve God and honor God and make a difference in our world. Amen? Look at it with me. Psalm 51, verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners will be converted to you. Hey, out of our pain, we get to praise, and then other people start getting help. We get our mind off ourselves. We start thinking about sharing this life, sharing this love, giving away what we have to other people. Stop wallowing in our own stuff. And Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to others, David said. I'll teach others and they'll be converted. And all of a sudden, your life has new meaning and new motivation and new spirit and the joy of your salvation. Let's move from pain to prayer to praise. And let's find that joy in the Lord. Maybe it's a family circumstance, a financial circumstance, a physical circumstance. Wendy and I have had many in our life together, many battles, many challenges, but we keep moving from pain to prayer to praise. Keep walking with God. 
Never quit, never give up. Pain, prayer, praise. I'm going to follow that step. I'm going to follow my prayer life, and I'm going to overcome in Jesus' name. I hope every time you think about the Lord's Prayer, you see yourself walking to that challenge through that problem to the blessing of the Lord. Every time you think about this Psalm 51, you see yourself moving from pain to prayer to praise, and you realize God is going to answer your prayer, right? Don't get quiet. Don't lose your connection. Don't get unforgiving and bitter and angry and blaming everybody. You and God are going to walk this out, and you're going to win. You're going to be blessed, and you're going to live an abundant life in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. Well, I'm believing that you heard something from the Word today that will help you, strengthen you, empower you in your walk with God. The Lord has more for us. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Don't settle for less. Go for the more abundance that Jesus has for you. Remember, at caseytreat.com, you can hear this entire series entitled Closer Than You Know. And we talk about prayer and various aspects of our prayer life and how to strengthen that walk with the Lord. At caseytreat.com, you'll see other teaching and ministry tools there. And uh, we want to connect with you. We want to help you in your walk with God every day. We want to add to your life and your relationship with Him. Let's stay strong in the Lord. Let's live for the Lord. Let's make a difference in our world. That's our prayer today, that you are walking with him and making a difference in your world. So I'll see you at caseytreat.com and next time right here for our very special ministry. Thank you so much for your support of Casey Treat Ministries. We value our partners. If you would like to do a one-time donation or become a monthly partner for 25 50 or $100 a month, call us today at 253-943-2400 or go to caseytreat.com.